Good afternoon here for 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jason Fisher, your host for today. And today we're talking about site prep. And there are a number of means with which site prep can be explained and how it's done. And we're in the Southern Piedmont of Virginia. Uh, I'm standing on a clear cut site that was cut last October. And it's being sprayed this July, so some eight or nine months later. Uh, so that it can be planted in March. Pine need full sun. And so the competing vegetation has to be uh, treated uh, so that they can get a start and grow and have space and uh, not be out competed. So this stand will be managed for pine plantation, loblolly pine. We're also planting short leaf, uh, native pine to the southern Piedmont, uh, and a small portion of the cutover and the open fields. Uh, so site preparation, what is it? Well, it can be a number of means. It can be chemical, it can be mechanical, it could be fire um, as well, which is a mechanical practice. Here we are out on a track with a ground crew. These gentlemen are from the Honduras. This is actually their first track for the 2021 year, I'm told. And they've done their mixing back here um, behind me just this morning. And a gentleman is refilling and getting close to them so they can refill. Each of the workers is carrying, I'm told, a little over four gallons apiece. And they're using just spray wands, you can see, going from side to side. And there's a 11, I think, 11 or 12. So they're covering, you know, a good 70, 80 yards in one swath, you know, looking at the size of this group. So one of the crew bosses here, Shane, is coming back to refill his uh, UTV to go back out and resupply the guys so they can keep working. And you can see the chemical on this red maple there on the leaf tips. Well, they've got good coverage. And this is a stump sprout from October of 2020. So a little over nine months ago, we've had decent rain, so got a lot of uh, pokeweed that's come up here. It's pretty easy to get. And you see this princess tree, Royal Paulonia. Tulip tree is going to go crazy here because there were a lot of poplar on this site. And uh, poplar tends to stick its head out and survive some of these treatments. I don't know the scientific reason as to why that is, other than they're pretty prolific and fast growers, soft hardwood. So now I'm walking behind where these guys have sprayed, not checking on them, but just seeing how good a coverage we're getting. You saw the maple earlier, but I want to point this out. I did not know I had this. So we got Elanthus tree of heaven, which certainly comes into disturbed sites. That's a tree that's on my hit list for obvious reasons. I'm not going to be touching this because I don't have my PPE on, but I'm looking. So we've got good coverage on this tulip poplar sprout. Some more tree of heaven. It's probably going to need a, some additional treatment. Black cherry. This is a hardwood track. I should have pointed that out earlier. So 99% of the trees here were, were all deciduous trees, were all hardwoods. There were some scattered pine, 
uh, enough that we do have some pine ridge in. We'll see if I can find one. And that's really the reason why I'm not straight planting. Uh, here in Virginia, uh, it's become, at least in the southern Piedmont, it's become common practice where people will cut a tract, wait a year, see what comes back, site prep, spray, and then plant the following spring, depending on what time of year the track was cut. I mentioned that about waiting uh, a growing season before treatment simply because if there's pine on the track, natural pine, we want to get that before we plant our pine into full open sun like you see in this cut over here. Also in Virginia, recently uh, there's been a boost. In fact, there's been a position hired, uh, or soon to be filled, I should say, position approved for the hardwood initiative. And one of the things about the hardwood initiative, one of the practices, there are many, one of the practices is when you let a track lay out for uh, a growing season, you have a chance to, to see what comes back prior to treating that. And there may be some areas, even in this track, where I would choose to manage for hardwood instead of spraying it and planting pine. Uh, now, I would be remiss to say that prior to even cutting the timber, we knew what was going to come back. Uh, but there's a lot of seed in the soil and seed bank, and depending on the stocking levels that you get back, may influence your decisions. Hey. <laughs> the crew boss also tells me that these guys are can be here for up to three years. Uh, some have been here just a couple months, but for the most part, most of this crew has been together for some time, and that's good. It makes it easy on everybody. You know what's expected. They got plenty of water for rehydration. Uh, it's early, it's July, late July. And I sure hope they do a good job because this is my wife and I's tree farm. We'll be planting loblolly on this track next March. There's actually an acre to the south of me right now we're gonna put in short leaf pine. And so you see three weeks after treatment and then five weeks after treatment. So we got really good coverage using a ground crew. Next up, we'll have aerial application used with a helicopter. This is another option for site prep that is used in rural areas as well as suburban uh, interfaces. But typically, uh, this is used in tracks that are larger in size and more conducive to the cost as well as the application method. a moment to thank Paul and Diana Coleman for letting me come on their property today. I'm standing here on Myers Creek, beautiful uh, watershed here in uh, South Side Virginia. And I come here because the, today's topic isn't water quality, but when we talk about site prep, um, we do try to protect uh, the water quality by leaving buffers, which in a forested situation is paramount to forest management. But generally in the case of site prep, we're dealing with a clear cut. And so that shouldn't be coming up to the banks of this stream. But either way, buffers are left and they're protected. And in a site prep situation, generally an additional buffer can be uh, recommended and is utilized on top of the buffer that's already there to protect water quality. So the trees that are in the buffer, uh, the root zones help uh, lower or prevent soil erosion. And they also add a leaching effect to things that might arrive in the water, such as anything from a septic uh, system in your home 
to things that may run off uh, on the surface. So the key thing with site prep is, as you saw this morning, was done early so we don't get drift from wind. Uh, and also looking at the weather, make sure you aren't going to have a rain event within 24 hours. Uh, so all those things help protect our waters and streams. And I wanted to mention that since we're talking about site prep today. Taking a look at some more mechanical site prep methods includes fire. Prescribed fire is used for site prep for pine plantings like this cutover site here. Fire is a great tool to be used uh, to get rid of the competing vegetation and just so long as there's enough fuel to carry the fire, it's a great site prep option. The only issue we have with prescribed fire is obviously the growing suburbia and urban areas when we get to those interfaces that poses an issue. And today when people see fire, they're obviously very concerned and think about wildfire. That's not what we're looking at here. In this case, we've got fire burning across a cutover that's had some natural pine come in it. And you can see this is a, a summer burn and uh, early fall. And so this site will be planted the following spring. One other mechanical option includes the drum chopper. This is a large steel cylinder that's pulled across the landscape with a bulldozer, for example. And once the cylinder is filled with water or some other material, um, this particular one could weigh up to 11,000 pounds. This would be in a young uh, stand uh, where you could get through the material with a bulldozer. And this would chop the material up to get it ready for planting or perhaps even burning. So in this picture, this is no site prep at all. This track was cut and left to grow naturally, and you can see there are thousands of seedlings competing for space on this site. Generally, only so many trees can be produced on an acre of land. So if pine were to be planted here, it would first need to be burned, sprayed, or drum chopped, for example, before the pines could be planted. In contrast, here's a site that was uh, site prep treated, in this case with a chemical application. And the following spring, we've got mare's tail and lots of weeds. And embedded in this tract are small pines. Weeds are not an issue uh, with competing with pine seedlings. Uh, what we're more concerned about are grasses and competing tree seedlings of species perhaps we may not want. One thing I'd like to mention here is earlier I talked about straight planting and waiting a year in the hardwood initiative. I'll also mention here that even after you plant pine, oftentimes hardwoods will come in, whether that's uh, from birds planting them or squirrels, uh, wildlife. And this is one way that we do grow hardwoods in Virginia, in the southern Piedmont, is through planting pine. Uh, so monitoring your stand as it grows, you may be surprised in what you find. So always be out and be on the lookout. 